In today's video, we're going to discuss which funds help your portfolio bounce back the strongest when markets are potentially nearing a bottom. We're going to discuss Cornerstone, Yield Max Funds, Defiance Funds, and some triple leverage ETFs. So we earn over $100,000 per year in dividends at this channel, and my performance and value shows that the portfolio is still hanging in strong. We're still up 31% for the year, beating all of the indexes. The S&P is up 12% and the NASDAQ is up 28%. So we're staying in between the S&P and the NASDAQ. Uh, well, on a year-to-date basis, we're beating all indexes, but on a daily basis, we're staying in between the S&P and the NASDAQ. As you can see, we're at 1% on Friday, but that um, to me could have been better because as you can see, the S&P was up a little bit more than that and the NASDAQ was up 1.6. So that's what this video is about. Can we find the best funds that help us bounce back the best uh, when we're nearing a market bottom. So please leave those comments in the section below on which funds you think are best for a bounce back, okay? I'm living financially free out of my brokerage account at this channel and many of my members are doing the same. If you want similar performance in your brokerage account, email me for my e-guides at akintod48 at gmail.com. Okay, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So the first thing I've been doing to bounce back stronger uh, in this market, which I've made plenty of videos about in the past, uh, is that I'm, well, I'm buying more Cornerstone. Now, I'm always trying to buy things that are tied to the indexes, so the first thing I'm going to buy is Cornerstone. Okay, so Cornerstone. Why Cornerstone? Because it's a four-star fund. Well, CRF is a five-star fund. Very hard to find, and it beats the indexes, and it has a 21% dividend. So if you're trying to live financially free out of your brokerage account and you want dividends, Cornerstone is the best way, in my opinion, but it also gives bounce back potential. See, we're up 1% on Friday in Cornerstone. So we're up about, about $5,000 in Cornerstone uh, alone, okay? Cornerstone's also special because it has this special drip program, which you can't find anywhere else. The last price was $7.88, but look at the drip price. It's down here at six. So the NAV is down at 651. That's a 21% gain. 651, 21, uh, 676, 16% gain. Let's see, 691, 14% gain. So these are all thousands of dollars between the two funds, CLM and CRF. We get the special drip in both. And again, I haven't found any other fund in the world that drips at the NAV like Cornerstone does, which is also linked to the indexes, okay? Not just drip at a discount, you know, or drip near the NAV, which I still haven't found another fund that does that, but a fund that's tied to the indexes, okay, that drips at the NAV. Find me a better fund, please. And I don't think you can. So that's why I've put about 500 grand in Cornerstone, okay, 500,000, but you just have to learn how to play this fund properly at the time it around its rights offerings, which that's what my um, Discord chat room alerts you of, okay, we have about 500 members in here now, and uh, our daily portfolio recap is here, this is where I track my portfolio when I'm not making videos on YouTube, but we also have the Cornerstone rights offering announcement, which is here, okay, RO announcement only, okay, and that's where we alert you of the rights offering in Cornerstone. That's where you sell before and you buy back after so that you can really reload in your shares and reset your dividend and uh, pocket those 30% premiums with Cornerstone. Because Cornerstone, you get 20% dividends, 30% premiums on average, and the special drip. So you use the rights offering to reload and 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 level up your wealth. Okay, you don't you don't run from rights offerings and say, I don't want to be in this fund because of a rights offering. They tell you when to sell, unlike the S&P, when it does not tell you when to sell at the highest. They also tell you where to buy at the bottoms after the rights offering, and the S&P won't tell you when to do that either. So the first thing I bought back was CLM CRF, okay? Yeah, 500 grand, and that's how our, our um, estimated income, you know, is still staying strong at about 150,000 per year, okay? Cornerstone was the first piece to the puzzle. It is the cornerstone, if you will, of the account. And, you know, uh, if you look in the Bible, go look up Cornerstone. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the foundational piece, okay? They talk about Cornerstone in the Bible being, you know, the foundational piece, Okay, go check it out um, to your, you know, to having the best success in life. I think Cornerstone named their fund Cornerstone for that reason. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're religious people because look, again, it has to be the Cornerstone. It, it is the foundation of my account, period. Okay, so uh, you can please try to find me a better fund and we can discuss that in the comment section below. The next fund, the, the next group of funds that I'm buying, okay, are are these uh, yield max funds that you all are very well aware of. Now, what I did was I swapped 30K yield max funds for 
10K Fangu, okay? So you, you guys know that I've been doing this. So 10K Fangu, and we're already bouncing back nicely. We're up $800 on Friday alone in Fangu. So this is how I'm getting my uh, dividends of 100 and, uh, over 100,000 per year in dividends plus days gain. So you have to throw in Cornerstone, and then you get Fangu because this was up, what, 7%. So this, to me, is a good candidate for a bounce back, okay? It's, it's the top uh, tech names in the S&P, Fang, okay? So... Uh, that's why I took out 30k yield max, which is single leveraged, and then I swapped with 10k Fangu, which gives me which freed up 20k of margin. Okay, so I used that 20k of margin, all right, to go buy uh, defiance funds, Jeppy and QQQY. Okay, so that's how I really jumped my income up to over 150. Is not only buying more core zone funds, but but. Uh, obviously buying these defiance funds, okay? Uh, they have 60% dividends. I mean, Jeppy and QQQY have uh, astronomical dividends right now. That's why I'm getting such high income. Now, the question will be, what is their decay like? Okay, and what's and we already talked about that in the last video. And then what is their bounce back potential like in a given day? So when we're up in the market, they still moved pretty good, 0.7 and 0.6. I'll take that for being um, such a, a, um, a conservative fund, in my opinion, where they just sell puts that expire the next day. Um, the the jury is still out on these funds, though. Please leave comments in the section below on Defiance if you think that there are uh, other things we should be looking at for Defiance. So then, so that's the first thing. I added more to the C's. Then I took thirty, sold thirty k out of Yield Max funds. Okay, bought back ten k Fangu. All right, and that's how I'm getting still the same exposure on the way back up. You know, up seven hundred and seventy seven dollars because most Yield Max names are Fangu names. Okay, then I took the 20K and I put it into defiance funds because now I have not only the same income that I was getting in Tesla and NVIDIA because they're about the same yields defiance, but now I'm protected in the indexes and I'm guaranteed to rise with the indexes. Now, Tesla was up 0.78 and look at uh, QQQY up 0.7. So I'm happy with that swap. When I sold 7K out of Tesla, we had 10K. Now we only have 3K Tesla. Sold 7K. You know, having it in defiance, it's it's um, it's giving me the same bounce back potential, plus the same yield, plus more safety because it's indexed. Okay, and the way I'm actually playing Tesla now is through OARC because that's still the largest holding of OARC. It's still a large holding of Fangu, and I'm also playing um, uh, uh, Tesla through just uh, my other indexes, which uh, my other ETFs, the triple leverage ETFs, which I'm going to share with you next. Okay, so. That's what I did. 30K out of, of Yield Max, 10K Fangu, 20K of, of the remaining proceeds there, 20K into Defiance. Then, all right, then I, this is, this is an important thing for me because when I saw the, the chart of Fangu being on the 200 day moving average, I started looking into other triples, okay, because, um, we don't want just dividends. Okay. Yeah. You want dividends, but you want performance. Okay. You want capital gains and dividends. I want the best of both worlds. So when I saw the chart of Fangu on the 200, which you guys are well aware of, I've been, I've been documenting how the S and P is on the 200, the NASDAQ is on the 100 and Fangu here is on the 200 coiling so tight that I had to keep adding to it. And I was selling out of TQQQ, all right, and going into Fangu so that I could take the loss in TQQQ, uh, TQQQ uh, the, over the last week. And I, and I put the same amount of money into Fangu because Fangu is gonna move more than TQQQ. All right, but most of the uh, triple leverage ETFs look like this chart, okay? So what did I wanna do? Did I wanna go buy more triple leverage ETFs because they're on the 200? I mean, I bought more Fangu. Can I afford more triple leverage ETFs? And in my opinion, uh, I don't I don't think so because if we break the 200, then all hell is going to break loose. So I didn't want to just go all in triples yet. I like to do those after a, a bigger market correction. We've only pulled back about 10% from the highs. So if you go look at uh, the other funds that I've sold puts on, I, well, that's that's the, uh, the story in a nutshell. Okay, I sold puts on these triple leverage ETFs. And I'll, I'll, I, I'll walk through how I did one of the puts with you, or maybe if, if we have enough time, I will, or if... Uh, if if we can, I'll do it in another video. So let's just look at TECL, okay? Uh, the the thing that you need to look out for in these ETNs and ETFs are that they're leveraged, so they decay, so that's the first risk. And then ETNs, you need to be aware of default risks, so issuer risks. So um, if an ETF blows up, you're pretty much going to get 
uh, you're going to get your money back. They're going to take over the fund, you know, uh, and some other manager will take it over and uh, supposedly it'll be fine. But ETNs, uh, they have uh, issuer risk. So if the company goes under, then then uh, the ETN goes under. So you need to watch out for that with Fangu. Also, uh, well, one thing I like about ETNs, they have better tracking performance. So they should have less tracking errors, which in my opinion means less decay. Um, so that's why I went more into Fangu as well. It moves more. It has less tracking errors. And so perhaps less decay. Um, but you guys, please leave comments in the section below. Uh, for the third time, I've asked you guys to say a lot in the comments. I, I get it here. Uh, there's a lot to talk about, but um, please uh, tell me what you think are the other risks to ETNs. All right, ETFs, we know the triple leverage ETFs that they decay. All right, ETNs have issuer risk, ETFs, they don't. So I've been selling puts though, nonetheless, on these ETFs because I don't want to just buy them and they decay on me, especially if we're going to break down below the 200-day moving average. You see that these funds don't make it back to the highs very well. TECL, look on a five-year chart, it did not make it back to the old highs, whereas the NASDAQ pretty much did. So I'm trying to always keep this in mind. This decay is devastating. But when you get a pullback to the 200-day moving average and you're getting a resumption of a bull uptrend, it makes sense to go into these funds that, de that decay around these lows so you can get the whole next leg higher uh, of, a, of a move higher. And then if we go, let's say, in the next 10 years, the market were to go to, you know, multi, you know, new market highs, you know, for 10 years in a row, uh, you would be at the bottom of that new bull leg. And so... That's why I'm trying to add to these triple leverage funds on the 200-day moving average, but I'm not adding to them. I'm selling the puts. Let's go look at the premiums and see what I received in those puts. And you'll see that uh, the puts here, um, I sold a put on UDAO, so I got my industrial exposure there, but it only moved $27 on Friday. Not enough for me. I sold puts on Tekel, which again, only moved $10 on Friday. Usually those will move more, so um, uh, keep that in mind. But I received $1,400 for selling the put on Tekel. So that took my cost basis from 45 minus about 15. So my cost basis is 30 in Tekel. I thought that was a nice move. I got extra premium for selling the puts at the lows. You sell puts at the lows, you sell calls at the highs. So I also sold puts on TQQQ, as you can see there. Another I sold two there, so we have two for ten dollars. So that's a uh, two thousand dollars received in TQQQ, and uh, so we have Tekel, uh, Triple Qs, uh, we have U Dow, which is the Dow Industrials, and we have U Pro, uh, which is here. I got thirteen dollars for selling a put on U Pro, so the cost basis is fifty minus thirteen, that is thirty seven. So this is a pretty good uh, risk reward uh, entry spot, in my opinion, for. UPRO because it's uh, right around the 200, just like all the other ETFs, all the other indexes. So I sold the puts there because the premiums are most attractive. And when the market goes up, these will move up for me. My sold put section can move up about 1,000 on a given day. They were just down uh, on Friday. Even uh, you see uh, IEP, days gain, down $700 on Friday. That's not um, indicative of, uh, uh, like I sold, uh, uh, I sold, uh, three contracts on IEP on Friday. And look, they, they showed them down $700. That's not true. That'll get baked back in. Sometimes volatility can be wonky in these sold puts. So 736, that will come back. So my real day's gain here was not uh, 7,000. It was really 7,700. So uh, once these uh, options um, catch back up in price, because they, they, they are priced by the midpoints, the options. So you have to wait till they catch up in liquidity. Uh, and, and when they hit their midpoint, you should see better performance out of those options. But I don't really go by performance on a day's basis. I just collect the premiums. And I, I do three things in these options. Many things, actually. I lowered my, my margin debt with these options. Now my margin debt's $175,000. Um, now my interest payments are much lower. They were still low. I had 6% interest on my on my margin debt. Many of my members have... Um, have uh, uh, negotiated their rates down. So can you. Uh, you can use margin in your account. Everyone has this power to, in their brokerage account. $1, you get every $1, you get $4 of purchasing power. Okay. So for every $1 in your account value, you get $4 of purchasing power. Okay. Uh, now we're still also well away from margin calls. We're over 200,000 uh, and, and available for withdrawal. So the market would have to have a 30 plus correction from here to get me into a margin call, which wouldn't even happen because 20% of that is dividends and cornerstone. So 30% minus 
is a uh, 10%. So I would only lose 10% over the course of the year if we fell 30% because my dividends in Cornerstone, once again, pay that back. And also I have my put options. I, I have my uh, triple, I mean, I have my QQQ put option, which I'm going to add to on Monday. I'm going to go ahead and go out till uh, November's, reset my put options there for my insurance. So I'm really not worried about any kind of market correction. Uh, this debt is much more manageable now. It'll pay, be paid down in less than two years with the amount of income that I own, uh, that I earn, 150000 in dividends. Uh, so this is uh, the way to live life. When this gets to zero, I'm going to just put my debt right back on and uh, keep uh, pushing it for my estimated income because people ask me, when is enough enough, Todd? Enough is never enough because you never know uh, when you might have a health dis uh, a health scare or some kind of uh, financial crisis in the market or some kind of just life issue that uh, is unexpected and, and, and comes it hurts your bank account. I have to always have enough income to save up for those rainy days. All right, so that's what I did, okay, in my portfolio. All right, if you need help uh, living financially free out of your brokerage account using the power of margin or using Cornerstone, email me for my e-guides at akintod48 at gmail.com. If you need help understanding the charts, uh, that's in my volume two e-guide. Also, we have Carbon Zero over at the trading chat room in Discord who can help you out with uh, understanding charts better uh, because these charts are really significant right here. We're on the 200-day moving average. We're right on the fence, so it really begs the question, which which funds help your portfolio bounce back the strongest when the markets are potentially near a bottom? So leave comments in the section below if you have any better ideas on how to bounce back stronger, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.